Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 4th, 2022 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One issue that keeps coming up is exposed devices, whether this is a cameras with weak telnet passwords or network storage devices or lately things like, for example, your integrated lights out adapters. But the one question that always comes up with this is how do I make sure that I'm not exposing anything like this to the internet? Essentially, how do I manage my attack surface? How this is often described. I put together a quick blog today with uh, some tools that I like that I found helpful in order to get a hold of uh, this particular problem, in particular for smaller organizations. Now, one little sub problem here is, of course, how do you deal with uh, people working from home and their networks? It would be interesting to hear what people are doing if you're sort of including, for example, home networks. Uh, in vulnerability scans, or if you're more relying on securing the devices uh, directly. Then we have a couple of news items regarding multi-factor authentication. And uh, first of all, Microsoft published its new quarterly cyber signals reports. And according to that, well, uh, sadly, only about a fifth or 22% of Azure Active Directory users are taking advantage of multi-factor authentication. But multi-factor authentication does remain a very effective uh, measure to prevent attacks against the uh, these types of accounts. Microsoft is seeing hundreds of uh, password attacks per second. Of course, no big surprise, given the scale of uh, Microsoft's operation. Also, Okta is reporting that uh, they're seeing about 10 times more attacks against accounts that don't take advantage of multi-factor authentication. On the other hand, we do have a blog post by Proofpoint stating that uh, phishing attacks are certainly paying attention here and starting uh, to incorporate some proxy techniques in order uh, to get to users that do use two-factor authentication. Because after all, if you assume that phishing attacks work, which we know they do, it's not that difficult to get a user to visit a malicious website that looks like the real website. And for multi-factor authentication, that website then often just implements a proxy to the actual website and then essentially writes the session. If you are very uh, concerned about these type of attacks, then typical solutions are to either sign individual transactions or to use multi-factor authentication mechanisms that are phishing resistant, like for example, WebAuthN. And well, when I'm teaching web application security and we talk about cross-site scripting, I always mention that probably the most difficult type of application that uh, you could possibly attempt to write and protect against cross-site scripting is webmail because you essentially have to display a wide range of HTML that shows up in emails inside that HTML container of the webmail application. Case in point, uh, Simpra. Simpra is a somewhat popular a webmail application that typically is run on premise. So if you haven't moved to the cloud yet, Simpra may be an open source solution that you like instead of uh, Exchange or uh, some of the proprietary solutions. And uh, unpatched, so a zero-day cross-site scripting vulnerability is actively being exploited in order to break into users' Simbra accounts. All this takes is an email being sent to the user that then is being opened by the user, which exposes them to the cross-site scripting attack and with that to arbitrary JavaScript. The user does have to click on a link in the email. So a little bit user education here may help, but of course uh, that's always difficult if the attack is more targeted as it appears to be in this case. And it's time to update your Cisco RV series, a small business router. Again, in particular, if you're using them for a VPN access, Cisco patched a number of vulnerabilities in these devices and at least one of the vulnerabilities may lead to unauthenticated remote code execution. 
And in other updates, we do have updates for a Google a Chrome and also updates for ESET antivirus. Uh, some of the products uh, do have vulnerabilities that can lead uh, to uh, privilege escalation. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.